Tracking on the face of it can seem complicated, but in DaVinci Resolve, it is very, very simple. My name's Dan, you're watching Dan Vinci, and welcome to the Planar Tracker tutorial. Let's do this. All right then guys, so I've imported some footage into DaVinci Resolve. It's some B-roll footage from Geekawata channel that I edit for. So what we're going to do is apply some text to this GPU. Now the techniques that I'm going to show you will work with footage that is handheld, but please note that smoother footage will make it far easier to track than let's say shaky footage. Just the way it is, it is just the way it is. Okay, so we're going to drag this footage into the timeline, create a timeline, and I'm just going to apply a quick grade. Nothing crazy, but I will explore color grading at some point. So all the more reason really to subscribe. Yes, you better press that button. Okay, now that the footage is ready, what we're going to do is we're going to head into the Fusion tab. Now the Fusion tab can be very scary. Believe me, when I started, it was scary. <laughs> So jumping into Fusion, we want to apply a tracking node. So control space on your keyboard will bring up this selection tool search bar in one sense. So what you want to do is search track. There is camera tracker, planar tracker, surface tracker, and tracker. So there's a lot there that we can choose from. This one I think is going to be perfect for planar tracking. So we're going to click add. Now this has created a little planar tracker node. This is connected in to our media in and our media out. What do we do here? So go over to the side here in your inspector tab. And as you can see, we've got various controls. So what we want to do is we want to set this as our starting frame. I think what Resolve does here is it takes this frame as a reference for the rest of the tracking. As you'll see later, this tracker is very powerful, potentially one of the best trackers I've, I've seen, except maybe the 3D camera tracking in After Effects, but that does crash a lot. So now that we've set the reference frame, we want to go over to our object that we want to track. And let's say, click here, click here, click here, click here, and click here. Now we've created a little box. Now it doesn't have to be a box, but I'm just following the general shape of the GPU and where we're going to put the text. Basically, it's down to you and where you want the object. Where you want the object will dictate the shape that you're creating for the tracking. Let's go over here to our inspector once again, and we're going to click this button. Oh, it's not done anything. Ah. Well, wow. this button here only tracks the one frame forwards. If you go over to the second button here, track to the end, it will track all the way through. And as you can see these little dots, well, wow. it's tracking lots of things at once, which is brilliant. It makes it way more stable, way better. And I think ultimately Planar Tracker is the best tracker in Resolve, period. That might be controversial. There might be editors out there that will say to me, Dan, that isn't the best tracker. This is. On the timeline here, you can see these little keyframes that which are basically demonstrated as lines. And as you can see, if we scrub through the footage here, the tracking software has basically put little green dots all over the footage. See how easy that is? We're halfway there, it's brilliant. What do we do next? It's quite simple. So the first way is to create a planar transform. So what this does is creates a little node that's off your node tree, but you're gonna want to use this. So what you wanna do is unlink the planar tracker, leave it over here by itself, loser and drag over the planar transform. So what we want to do is create a merge node. Now, if you've got your default quick tools here, we want to go to the merge node, which will look like this one located sort of in the third category. Boom, it'll create a merge node. Now we want to drag this transform node over to the merge node. Boom, it's connected. So now we have a basic fusion tree. This fusion tree consists of the media a merge node and the planar tracker transform, which has all the tracking data from the planar tracker embedded into it, which makes things far easier when we're applying, let's say an object to the scene. And I'll show you that now. So let's add some text to the footage. Go over to this little first category of nodes. So if we go over here and drag this little T down, it will create a text one node. Wow, magic. So what we want to do is click here in the little inspector area and type in whatever we want. So let's just put RTX. Go over to the text node and click the little square, drag that over to the planar transform. Boom, we have RTX. Let's drag that down. Let's put that there. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. If we render that out by right clicking on the footage, clicking render in place, click render, save somewhere. It's rendering. I'll be right back in a second when that's rendered. So it's rendered. Let's click play. And as you can see, the text has tracked onto the GPU. Now you might be looking at me and going, Dan, you're mad. That doesn't look very good. I agree with you. I'm not saying it looks good, but there is a better way that we can track in 3D with the planar transform. All right, so we're back in the fusion node tree. Let's delete this. 
you'll be like, Dan, what have you done? Well, drag back in the planar transform. This is where things get interesting. What we want to do here is go over to the operation mode in the inspector tab. Click down this operation mode and click on corner pin. This creates a funky square in your footage and just drag it around a little bit. Let's try and match the perspective of the GPU. Follow the leading lines of this little PCIe lane area here match the line of the edge of the GPU there. Right, so that looks roughly right. Let's just follow that there. So that's, that line there is matching this line. That line there is matching the line here. And then let's drag this down so it matches the length of the GPU. So it's like that. Right, so now we've got a box that sort of resembles the 3D structure of the frame. So what we want to do now is drag the text by clicking the text square onto the planar transform. Boom, we now have RTX on the GPU, but it looks sideways. That's fine. Let's just move it like so and then size that up would you look at that all right so that clearly already looks really really good and we haven't even clicked play so let's go over to the edit page and render it again and see what it looks like okay so now it's rendered let's click play now that already looks brilliant. So it's clearly worked. As you can see, the tracking has matched the perspective of the GPU and the shot. And I think that's turned out great. All right, guys, so that concludes the tutorial about the planar tracker. Now there are loads of trackers in DaVinci Resolve and I feel like I've barely touched upon any of it. And if you want me to look into other trackers, let me know. I might do in the next video, but I'll see you next time. Goodbye.